We will discuss the perceptron algorithm and implement it from scratch in Python. Because software engineers from different backgrounds have different definitions of from scratch, we will be doing this tutorial with and without NumPy and Panda. So if you want to see the tutorial with NumPy and Panda, you go over there. And if you want to see the tutorial without um, anything outside the main library from Python, you go over there. The perceptron algorithm is a supervised learning method to learn linear binary classification function. In other words, it's an algorithm to find the weights w to fit a function with many parameters to output 0 or 1. So this algorithm um, has several limitations uh, and um, misses, misinterpreted criticism that he received back by, in the day by Dr. Minsky lead to a full-blown AI winter. Um, it's however a very important algorithm to understand um, because this leads to the multi-layered perceptron and uh, uh, ultimately to deep learning uh, model. So, um, like I said, it's only able to learn the left things, so linear uh, decision boundaries. Let's look at how the perceptron is generating an output. So you have x1 to xn, and you have w1 to wn. And what it's doing, it's doing a, a dot product of all of these. And um, if the dot product is above um, theta, which is the bias, we give a 1, otherwise we give a, a 0. So that's, that's just how it works. If you're familiar with neural network, uh, it's using the heaviside step function as its activation function. So here to generate a meaningful output given the x's, um, we need to have uh, meaningful w's. Those are the parameters that are um, trained on. So the training part of the algorithm looks like this. First, before doing all of that, we uh, set a learning rate between 0 and 1. Um, we initialize the weight between 0 and 1 randomly too. This is how we update the weights uh, through each iteration, right? So we take the w, right? And then we do w plus the gradient. And then the gradient is found like this. This is um, stochastic uh, gradient descent. So you have the learning rate, n, over here. And then you have the target value, so your y, minus whatever the perceptron currently output with its current set of weight times x at i. That's just how um, the, the gradient is set for all the weights, right? And then uh, how do we pick, um, how do we calculate uh, that gradient? We randomly select um, an x from all of the sample. So here, that will change the o, and that's it. There's many ways of calculating the gradient. Um, there's batch, gradient descent, mini batch, stochastic. Here we're using stochastic. So it looks somehow like this, right? Uh, through each iteration, it will try to find a better and better plane, um, depending on how you, you set your algorithm. And here in the red, it's going to be, let's say, 1. The blue will be a 0. And then uh, the bias here is uh, changing, and then it's above uh, 1.0. Here, uh, it's, a, it's a depiction of uh, stochastic gradient ascent. We're picking one uh, element. If it's wrong, this is the only time where we change something in our function. If it's not wrong, we just skip it because our, our um, decision boundary is not that bad. So here, if it's wrong, we calculate uh, the gradient and then the dot product. There's going to be another wrong one. And then we just modify the weights uh, here, W. Um, we have two parameters. We modify the weights and then we just, uh, we just iterate until we converge. So that's basically how it works. So let's dive into a Python implementation now. Um, so here, let's start with NumPy and Pandas. So um, what I did is I create a class Perceptron and I'm using the fit um, predict kind of, um, kind of setup over here. So I, I kind of like SK, uh, SKK learn a little bit without the transform. Here it's where I'm using Panda just to load the data set, um, do some transformation to get my X and Y into a NumPy array, and then fit it um, inside of the algorithm over here. So let's look first at the algorithm per se. So this is my constructor. I'm doing absolutely nothing but uh, storing an empty list of weights. And this is where I'm doing actually um, the heavy lifting. 
but let's look at predict first so predict is super simple remember the uh, little diagram we're doing a, a, a sum of um, uh, weights and input multiplication so a dot product so what I'm doing over here I'm getting the activation at the weight 0 which is the bias right and over here this is where I'm summing up the rest so I uh, take all the rest of the weight and um, one row right which has uh, many features in there and then what I'm doing is I'm uh, summing up all of this inside the activation over here so I'm doing weight times feature and then summing up the activation and then over here this is where I return so this is um, this is actually my fake um, my AV side uh, step function activation so this is my step function um, activation that I'm using uh, if the activation is bigger or equal than uh, zero, we return a one. If it's smaller than that, we return a zero. So that's pretty much it for this. Right? This is simple. Uh, the zip over here allows us to um, um, iterate through, through um, the weight and the feature together. So it really simplify the coding. Okay, so let's look at the fit function now. So our parameter is the X uh, matrix, which is the rectangular matrix. We have a Y vector which is the target and over here um, those are 0 1 right so there's no there's no multi clash uh, learning over here this is my learning rate I set it do a default value over here and the number of iteration is over here a hundred I think is can be enough depending on the um, problem so here I get some shape the shape of the, the, the matrix so the number of sample I have here and the number of feature here I initialize the weight randomly, right? Um, so, um, so I'm just using NumPy to initialize the weight. Normally I have one more uh, weight than feature because we have the bias, remember? And here this is where I'm training the stuff for real. So what I'm doing over here, I'm uh, getting a random integer, right? So here this is uh, the stochastic gradient descent. So stochastic because I'm taking one sample randomly to to um, to do my uh, training. So here I'm getting a random integer, right? And then I'm taking this sample from um, so I'll take the random sample from the data set. I'll do my prediction using um, the function that we saw before over here, and then I calculate the error, right? Over here, this is my gradient actually. So this is my little gradient over here it's an estimate of the gradient estimate if I wanted to have like the true gradient I will have to do like batch gradient descent but uh, this is not what this um, the perceptron is using and over here I'm setting the weight for the bias uh, if you see over here we're not doing a multiply um, X right it's just here it's implied that we have a, a one over here so um, self weights at zero equal the self the, the weight the bias over here plus the learning rate times the error times x zero which is one i could have put x zero and append it over here with the one but i could have done that but whatever you, you get the point and over here this is where i'm uh, updating the rest which are not the bias so here uh, update all parameter except uh, after bias so those are my W's. So what I, I'm doing is I'm just putting the X's over here, right? That's that's all. I'm just iterating over them. Um, that's pretty much it. And here I'm doing just some printing, right? Um, if you look over here, what I'm doing um, after a hundred iteration, right? I'm gonna calculate here on the full um, full data set. Uh, there might be some better way of of estimating the error. But um, we're, you're gonna see we're just working with um, the ARIS data set, so it's 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 not too bad to do that. And that's pretty much it. This is the perceptron. Super simple. The key point here is the stochastic gradient descent over here, and the heavy side stem function over here. That's all that is important. Okay, perfect. So here in uh, the uh, the panda thing that we're doing, we're uh, getting the ARIS data set. Um, and then we're uh, putting some dummies um, 
for the variety here actually it's doing one hot encoding uh, so uh, we're gonna have variety versicolor variety um, setosa whatever the, there's four I, I guess I think um, variety of, of uh, flower um, just to fork up some context to people that don't, don't know it is data set is like a toy data set that people use to test algorithm um, and here we have uh, the length of the sepal, length, the width of the sepal, the petal length, and the petal width, and we're trying to um, uh, trying to predict which flower it's going to be. Right? There's, I guess, four. But here I'm doing: is it a, a versicolor or not? Right? This is what I'm doing. So those my, are my y, right? And I'm doing a two numpy. Here also I'm doing a two numpy, and because I did this. Um, uh, one auth encoding over here this thing is one or zero so this is one one or zero and this over here is um, just a rectangular matrix here I'm shuffling the data set together um, just to not have the all the ones at the beginning and uh, over here I'm creating my perceptron and finally I'm fitting it over here so let's look at how it behaves oh, I didn't run this thing perfect so let's look at how it behave we have an error of 0 0.6666, which is super bad actually. Um, it's worse than random. Let's increase the number of iteration. And there we go. We can get down to um, about 36% um, of error. So 36, the 36 time over here, he did an error, which is, um, which is actually better than, um, than random in this case. So that's it. So this is the whole um, whole thing. Um, however, here the training um, it was done on the full data set. I don't know how much, I don't know how big this thing is. Print. Yeah. So over here, um, the training was done on the full data set. So that means that the thing uh, most likely overfitted over here. If we were to give like a training and a test data set, it will most likely. Um, take some tweaking to um, to uh, to train properly, and here this is like a, an overestimate of how good it can be. Um, but for the purposes of the uh, showing that the algorithm is actually um, can actually learn a, a line, it's working. So this is what this was with uh, NumPy and Python, uh, and Pen this was with NumPy and Pandas. Let's look at the same algorithm without Pandas, without NumPy. So it's just more verbose, that's it. So here, let's look at the perceptron, right? And um, here, same thing, same thing. Over here, we had x that shape. We're just manually taking them. And in here, we assume we have a rectangular matrix, which might not be the case if we don't have an numpy array. Um, this is the same, I'm almost the same thing, but here I'm manually um, setting the weights to be a random number between zero and one for all of the weights. And here, remember, we're here we have um, one more uh, weight than feature, so this is what I'm doing, plus one. And I would, after that, I have my weights initialized randomly. Um, same thing here, we're still using stochastic um, gradient descent. Um, there's nothing much change here. Yes, I'm not using the... So about the same notation over here. And over here too. And that's pretty much it. So. I use mostly, uh, here it doesn't really matter if you're using NumPy or not, but I used it for convenience because um, you make setting up the problem before easier if you know you have a NumPy array. Um, and that's it. There's not much difference um, between the previous code and this one. Uh, when we remove Panda, this is where you see that everything, um, like reading CSV files is, is, a, prob is a problem. So um, here, this is my Panda code. Right, so here I'm setting a data frame. I'm doing read CSV. This is actually the my version of read CSV. Here I'm just like showing them. That's not really useful. And over here, this is where um, I'm getting the x's and then getting the encoded label for versicolor. This is doing the one. That, this is uh, like doing a encoding for zero and one. So if it's a versicolor, it will give a zero. If it's not, it's gonna give a one. It's doing about the same thing as before and here I'm doing the permit together which I created and here I'm doing the rest if we look it doesn't work because I didn't run this 
I get the same, um, about the same um, behavior as the code before. So now let's look at the data frame um, code. Here we have the permit together helper function. So I'm permitting two, um, one matrix and one uh, uh, vector together. So I have my permitting um, vector that I'm going to be returning over here. And what I'm doing is while the X's and the Y are still not zero, I'm just going to remove them and pop them, uh, pop one item randomly. So here I'm popping, uh, I'm getting an, um, uh, an index and here I'm popping it and putting directly into perm X and same thing here. It's the same ID. So um, that's all I'm doing over here. Here, this is uh, the actual panda code. This is the data frame. So um, I'm setting up some header, an X and a Y, and uh, I have some helper function. Here I'm just cleaning um, the string. Um, this is not too important. And here, this is where I'm doing, um, getting the encoded label. So this is my target, and this is what I'm gonna return. And I'm just iterating through the Ys. And if the label is equal to the target, I go I give one, otherwise I give a zero. Right, there's might be a, a cleaner way of doing this, but that's um, the quick and dirty way of doing it. And this is the read CSV, which um, is the, the bulkier part of the code. So I'm opening the CSV and I have to do this over here to not some to not get the little Indian, big Indian thing at the beginning of the, 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 the CSV file. I'm making a CSV reader over here. And then here, this is where I'm um, turning through the the, the rows of the CSV uh, file. Um, if the index is the first one, so minus one, we're gonna get the header. So I'm doing, um, I'm iterating to um, this row, right? I have to go inside because it gives me a, a list, which is as one big string inside. I split it to have a list that is split at the comma. Um, and then I iterate through those items in that list and I'm cleaning them to put them in the header. That's it. And then I continue like this. And over here, this is where um, I get the data. So what I do, I have X, small X over here, and target. This is like a one number. And um, this is my data row. So I'm doing the same thing as here, just to get the list of uh, string, right? And what I do is I iterate through them, right? Not through all of them, just like until the last one. And then I append them to X over here as a float. And the last one here is gonna be um, last item in the CSV will be the target. So that's how the, the thing is structured. You have to look at it at the beginning and then you know. Um, and then I'm just gonna clean string it like this and append it to Y. And finally, I append the X, little X to big X. And I iterate, and that's pretty much all I do. Um, yeah, that's it. It's not too complicated, but it's just like more, um, more setup before you you can actually um, do anything. Did I mess up something by doing this? Oh, right, it's stochastic. So that's, uh, it's just bulk here, right? Um, it doesn't change the actual algorithm, but you have to do more uh, groundwork before you get to actually um, coding the perceptron and stuff. So just not using NumPy made this thing a bit more complicated, but not that much. Removing Panda is actually the pain point here. So that's it. We've learned how to code the perceptron algorithm, which is a simple algorithm.